Good evening and welcome to our COVID-19 update. I'm Ladi Akiri Duluale. Here are the highlights at this hour. Presidential Task Force pleads with Joint Health Workers Unions to call off strike. Promises that their demands are being looked into. Various sub-nationals express readiness for resuming students just as tertiary institutions in Lagos resume for studies. Undertakers in South Africa begin nationwide industrial action to compel government to set up COVID-19 relief fund for their industry. We'll begin tonight with the presidential task force acknowledging the decline in the spread of COVID-19 while warning Nigerians to remain vigilant. The chairman of the presidential task force on COVID-19, Boss Mustafa, also appealed to members of Johesu uh, to know that vaccines may not be available before the second quarter of 2021. He says the national response by this government has been applauded by its development partners and that government will remain focused. He called on Johesu to call off its ongoing strike. We therefore call on Jehezu to stand up to be counted at this critical moment because a continuation of the strike could jeopardize the small gains made in the fight against the virus and the efforts to transform our health systems. Buku said that our national response under the guidance of Mr. President is achieving impressive results and this has been commended by our development partners. Reports have, however, shown that diagnosis and treatment for chronic conditions are among the most frequently disrupted health services globally. A rapid survey by the World Health Organization revealed that 41 countries in sub-Saharan Africa have reported disruptions to such services. It is of great concern to find that just when people with hypertension and other chronic conditions need support the most, many are being left out in the cold. The Presidential Task Force therefore urges the various medical facilities not to neglect patients with other conditions on account of COVID-19. However, we do not expect vaccines to be available for countries probably till the second half of 2021. What this means is that we need to do more than ever before adhere to the prescribed non-pharmaceutical interventions and diligently avoid contracting the virus. Meanwhile, the leadership of Nigeria's Joint Health Workers Union, Jehesu, has made good its strike threat, directing all its members to withdraw their services and embark on an industrial action nationwide today. According to the union's leadership, there's no going back on this decision, which was reached after its expanded National Executive Committee meeting held yesterday. Jehesu says it gave the federal government seven days to address all lingering issues, but nothing concrete has been achieved. Labor and Productivity Minister Dr. Chris Ngige had on September the 10th asked members of the union to shelve their plans for industrial action or face sanctions. The health workers are asking the federal government to address the failing and decaying infrastructure in the health sector. The payment of the shortfall in COVID-19 has had allowances for its members and also all salary arrears. In Abeokuta, the Ogun State Capital, members of Jehosu joined the seven-day warning strike declared by the national body of the union to press home their demands. After a congress held at the premises of the Federal Medical Center idea by in Abeokuta, members decried the decay in various government hospitals across the country and alleged injustice against their members in the scheme of things in the health sector. In Bielsa states, the chapter of the Joint Health Sector Workers Unions also joined the nationwide strike, calling on the federal government to meet its demands. The chairperson of the union in Bielsa state, flanked by some of the members, insists that it will embark on 
the strike at the end of the seven-day strike, that is an indefinite one at the end of the seven-day warning strike, if the federal government does not address uh, the issues uh, raised. The strike action has, in the meantime, paralyzed medical activities at the Federal Neuropsychiatric Hospital in Kaduna, where health workers have joined the seven-day nationwide warning strike embarked upon by the national leadership of Johesu. Executive members of the joint unions, led by Chairman Atule Emanuel, uh, disclosed this while addressing journalists at that hospital. Uh, Mr. Emanuel explains that all the members of the union have downed tools in compliance with the directive of the national body. Health Minister Dr. Osagie Ehanere has asked Nigerians not to relent in the fight against COVID-19, even as the number of cases uh, is reducing. Dr. Ehanere says that state governments should cooperate with the task force uh, on COVID-19 to ensure that testing across board continues. He was speaking today at the presidential task force briefing in Abuja. Though we continue to record declining positivity rates every day, we are reluctant to conclude that we are halting the spread of this disease because many states have not sustained the testing rate that will give us the assurance. Only 13 states, for example, reported their figures in the past 24 hours, meaning that more than 20 states did not make a report. This can be better. Until all parts of the country can sustain a certain testing rate, it will seem presumptuous to conclude that we are flattening the curve. In the words of the Director General of the World Health Organization, we are not safe until everyone is safe. I therefore again request our state governments to ramp up the testing momentum by ramping up sample collection. We have requested and urged the setting up of sample collection centers at every local government area and in high burden local government areas in every political ward so that we can improve and increase the tests. We can together get control of the spread of this disease in our country. All domestic airlines in Nigeria are now fully operational and can operate, but with full compliance with COVID-19 protocols. And that's coming from the Aviation Minister, Senator Hadi Sirika, who was speaking during the Presidential Task Force briefing today in Abuja. Uh, Senator Sirika explained that all private charter flights out of the country, however, need approval of the authorities in the aviation industry. However, those airports that are private airports, which are called government-approved airports, but they are private, um, the operator should check the safety status with um, NCAA. Such airports like Jalungo, Uyo, Asaba, Gombe, Nasarawa, Damatru, Osubi, etc. So you wouldn't need any approval from the minister, but you should kindly check in this kind of airports with the NCAA regularly, which is normal. However, all flights out of the country that are private charter we still do need approvals for those kind of flights. And so also coming in, uh, including uh, tech stops, technical stops, uh, would be needing uh, approvals. Um, so this, with this, it means that um, the approvals that are sent via either NCA Nama or myself will cease, and if there's any change, it will be so advised accordingly. Moving on to schools resumption, following the directives of the Kogi State Government that academic activities should commence in both primary 
uh, secondary and uh, tertiary institutions as well. Schools have resumed today with some complying to the COVID-19 preventive measures while others are yet to comply. The State's Commissioner for Education, Honorable Wemi Jones, expressed happiness that the directives given to all schools before resumption was complied with uh, to avoid an outbreak of the pandemic. In Oyo State, the government there has announced September the 21st as the start of the 2021 uh, academic session for primary and secondary schools. The government, however, adds that all schools would be worked on to ensure that all safety protocols are strictly complied with. In Lagos, the scheduled reopening of tertiary institutions today may have been stalled at the Lagos State University after the Academic Staff Union of Universities, ASU, and the Non-Academic Staff Union of Universities, NASU, locked the university gates in protest of the non-payment of minimum wage. Elsewhere, activities are fully commenced at the Lagos State Polytechnic in Ikorodu with staff and students following these safety protocols. The management of LASPOTEC says resumption will be in phases, while other levels will continue learning through its online platforms. This is not how students of the Lagos State University imagined their first day of resumption after staying at home for six months due to the COVID-19 pandemic. They are greeted by the Academic Staff Union of Universities and their non-academic counterparts who shut the school gates in protest over the alleged non-payment of their minimum wage by the Lagos State Government. Due to non-implementation of the minimum wage of tertiary institutional workers, the resumption you know, has been stopped. You can see our gates you know, being locked because the government has not really you know, implemented the payment of you know, minimum wage in the last you know, 18 months. The university will continue to be shut down. There will be no any activities in the university. And uh, that will not, be too, you know, will not be too good for our students, parents, and even the government itself. Already frustrated from staying at home for months, the students appeal to the unions to use other means of resolving the matter. I'm using this medium to pledge and employ the state government and the federal government to please attend to this concerned body. Fair hearing. If you give me, you gave me that notice on Friday. The vice chancellor of Lasso is also caught up in this action. An attempt by him to dialogue with the unions ends in deadlock. Let the government address all their issues. All their issues are with government. It's not, not only about minimum wage. They have all their issues. Their university, their tertiary institution, last protect, moped, and accord. It's been starved of funds. Government must provide funds. Anyhow, they have to look for funds. Call the stakeholders meeting. It's not as if government has kept quiet about it. So everybody has been involved in this conversation. And I know that we will resolve it. So we just ask that our students should be very patient. The university has reopened, but within the next couple of days, I expect we will be able to put this behind us. Also reacting to the protest, Special Advisor to the Governor of Education, Tokumba Wahab, released a statement saying LASU receives 450 million naira every month from the state government as subvention and asked the management to pay up staff salaries. Elsewhere, activities have fully commenced at the Lagos State Polytechnic in Ikorodu with staff and students following the COVID-19 safety protocols. Being a novel virus, the COVID-19 pandemic brought with it many uncertainties. The seemingly unending wait by students was one of them. Now they're just happy to be back. We are back fully Lecture, lecture is going on fully and everybody is happy to see each other again. You can use it for sizing Apart from in-person instructions, online teaching is also being factored in by the management of LASPOTEC to accommodate the new normal in the face of the pandemic. We're taking our HND1, HND2, they are resuming today. Instead of having students coming in all together, we have divided them, them into batches. So batch one will come and have their lectures one hour, 
Batch 2 will also come, have their lectures one hour, while the other one hour will be taken online. Meanwhile, the University of Lagos is yet to reopen its doors to students as the federal government is yet to announce a resumption date. Joining us now is uh, Mr. Tokumba Wahab. He is the special advisor uh, to the Lagos State Governor on Education. Mr. Wahab, thank you for your time on uh, the program this evening. The fly on the ointment uh, in the case of uh, Lagos State's tertiary institutions appears to be a lasso. Uh, yet you, you are quoted as saying that $450 million, uh, is released by the state government every month to lasso and that they have no reason not to pay salaries. Uh, have you investigated this and found out what is going on? Um, good evening. Um, basically, I think what we're trying to do in the past few hours or the past few days is to engage the unions and let us be on the same page with respect to their request to the state government. We are listening to them. They listed out some requests to us. They wanted us to inaugurate their governing council, which we did about three weeks ago. And the council had barely settled in. They wanted us to put in place some infrastructure, and I'm glad to inform that the Senate building is now occupied because Mr. Governor had moved the contractors back to site. They abandoned the project for some time due to COVID um, um, outbreak. And then also, they are now saying um, the issue of minimum wage. Minimum wage is a law. Mr. Governor has signed the law, and it's, it's, a, it's, it's, it's something that we have to give them. So what we are trying to do in the, in the next few hours is to engage the unions, engage management, and then the state will be involved to see how we can have a meeting point. The law has been signed. They are public servants. So whatever is happening now is just about communications. I believe by tomorrow we should resolve it. The other institutions, of course, within the purview of the Lagos State Government, uh, the Lagos State uh, Polytechnic, let's, let's take that. that the resumption of Lagos State Polytechnic seems to have gone up without a hitch. Um, they don't have these same issues that LASU has. Uh, but their resumption is in phases. Why is their resumption in phases? Thank you very much. All the tertiary institutions in Lagos State are going to be resumed in, in phases. That's a directive from the state government. So that we don't put all the students on campus at the same time. It's, it's more like a measured enthusiasm with respect to the COVID. And then uh, now that we are at our play too, we're also trying to be careful with respect to the way we handle it. So, last two will resume eventually, but they will come in in phases too. The final year students will come in first before the other students will come in the penultimate year and then those in lower um, classes. Now, the same issue of minimum wage cuts across all the tertiary institutions. That Lagos Poly... I think they were going had failed to embark on the strike is because of the engagement we've had with them in the past few hours or past few days. And I believe by tomorrow, the gate of last will be open and that will work open in April. It's a continuous engagement process. Before I let you go, I must then ask you uh, to, to talk about what you expect to see uh, over the next couple of days. I mean, the whole issue of minimum wage apart. Uh, what would be the message you have for the students who are coming back, uh, even though you have explained that they are coming back in phases, but the enthusiasm that comes along with having stayed away for so long means that you may not be able to uh, contain the students returning to school for some kind of activity. What would be your message to them, uh, even as these institutions reopen? It's, it's that the students should let us keep to the safety protocols as released by NDC, NCDC and then put in place by the school authority. There's no reason why we've been home for six months and now that we are coming back, we now want to throw away the gains of the past six months. Safety first, life first, other things can follow. And I want to also plead with the unions, we, we partners in progress, the state government, the management of the school, and then the unions and the students. So for me, it's, it's, it's one ecosystem and we must exist in that ecosystem as brothers and um, bring the best to Lasso. This university has just been ranked as one of the best 500 in the world, the second best in the country. That counts for something. And we can't trade these games overnight.
Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Tukumba Wahab, uh, Special Advisor to the Governor of Lagos State on Education. Thank you for your time uh, this evening. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for having me here. We'll take a break on our COVID-19 update. When we come back, we'll bring you the latest in the figures uh, of Nigeria's caseload. Welcome back to our COVID-19 update. For the first time in almost five months, the Nigeria Center for Disease Control, the NCDC, has confirmed the country's lowest daily infections at 79 cases over the last 24 hours. The new infections were recorded in 12 states and the federal capital territory, Abuja. Lagos has 30 of those cases. Kaduna has 17, Ogun 7, Anambra 5, Kano 4, Katsina, the FCT, and Akwaibom have three each. Oyo and Rivers have two, while Delta, Plateau, and Undo have one each. The NCDC also reports that four deaths were recorded within the last 24 hours, one each in Delta, Kaduna, Ogun, and Undo states. 64 persons were also discharged in nine states and the FCT. Plateau had 24 of that number, Delta 13, Ogun 8, Akwaibum 4, same with the FCT and Kaduna. Rivers had three, Bochi 2, and Ekiti and Oshun uh, one case each. Before Sunday's record, the last time the country had less than 100 new positive uh, cases was on April the 27th, when 64 cases were confirmed. At the time, Nigeria had less than 2,000, that is precisely 1,337 cases, of which 251 patients had recovered and 40 persons had died. However, since April, the daily cases of COVID-19 had increased, and by August the 19th, Nigeria had crossed the 50,000 mark. Till date, the total number of confirmed cases in the country is 56,256, with 44,152 discharged and the death toll standing at 1,082. In Ekiti State, Governor Kayode Fayemi says uh, since the reopening of schools on August 10 for exiting SSCE students, there has been no spike or increase traceable to them or their teachers, which shows the COVID-19 preventive measures have been effective. Consequently, the governor has announced the reopening of uh, schools for students to include senior secondary school, SS2, and junior secondary school, GS3, and primary six uh, for September the 21st, 2020. Students in SS1, GSS2, and primary five and four are to resume uh, from September the 28th, while GSS1 and primary one to three are to resume on October the 19th, 2020. But for pupils in kindergarten and nursery, they are expected to resume on November the 2nd, 2020. For tertiary institutions of learning in AKT State, the government says they may reopen from October the 2nd, but subject to their level of readiness and compliance to the established protocols. The governor uh, announced that worship centers can now hold two services a day on Friday, Saturday, or Sunday. But midweek activities and night vigils remain suspended for now. The government continues to ask that citizens remain vigilant and avoid an upsurge. It is therefore my pleasure to announce that more classes will be reopened in the state as follows. Students in SSS 2, GSS 3, and Primary 6 are to resume on September 21st, 2020. Students in SSS 1, GSS 2, and Primary 5 and 4 are to resume from September 28, 2020. While students in GSS 1 are to resume on October 19, 2020. However, pupils in kindergarten and nursery schools are expected to resume on November 2nd, 2020, when we hope more assurances of safety for their age bracket would have been established. The face and hands are crucial in the prevention efforts against COVID-19, but many residents uh, of Delta State have continued to disregard the use of sanitizers as well as face masks, which authorities say will help protect humans from contracting uh, the virus. Our next report takes a look at how residents there are complying with the safety protocols recommended by the health authorities in a bid to curb the spread of COVID-19. 
Hassana Motor Park in Delta State, a major transit point for passengers traveling within and outside the state. Majority here are oblivious of the fact that COVID-19 is still very much spreading as they simply ignore the safety protocols and guidelines as they come in and go out of the park. None of them are deterred by the no face, no mask entry boldly inscribed here, which serves as a reminder that the virus is still very much out there. We are not naturally a human being. We are not used to restraining, restraining ourselves from breathing. It's difficult, naturally, it's difficult. So it's not something that we, you expect us to get used to. It increased every day by day, and we are using nose masks, washing hands, but it's still increasing. Why is it so? I'm supposed to ask you that question. Why is it so? The marketplace is no different. The hustle and bustle, buying and selling, is going on like nothing is even at stake. Tricycle riders and their passengers, on their part, try to observe the physical distancing rule. This park, Umweji unit, is the first park to obey the COVID-19 laws. We've been carrying two to Undermining the people at the express is carrying 4-4. We're trying to contravene why they should carry 4-4. That is against government rules. They, they didn't apply with us. For the state government, Relaxing some of the restrictions is not a signal to assume the virus is gone. Hence, people must take responsibility. At the moment, we have not further reviewed the number of passengers that these vehicles or the tricycle will convey. We have said, as time goes on, we will continue to take a second look. If the need arises for us to still take a second look at the number of persons that uh, vehicles and the tricycles are to convey, we will make it public, but that will be subject to further review by the technical committee. Delta State currently has a total number of confirmed cases of 1,780. Active cases stand at 126, while 1,606 have been discharged with 48 deaths recorded. But many are warning that if adequate measures are not taken, the numbers may just be on the rise. Joining us uh, via Skype from the solar area of Lagos to look at safety protocols that the reopened schools and students need to adhere to in order to prevent the spread of COVID-19 is public health physician Dr. Adjoke Adewale. Dr. Adewale, thank you for your time. Welcome uh, to the program this evening. Thank you for having me. How enthusiastic are you about uh, this reopening in Lagos, particularly of the tertiary institutions that have now done so, as well as the announcement by other states uh, of their schools resuming uh, primary and secondary schools in particular? I'm not enthusiastic um, at all, but there are things that we have to do and we have to consider. And regardless, as long as it's you know, it has to be a safe reopening. Um, like what the other states are doing, and I'm learning that they want to start with the SS2 and other more important classes. So even with the university reopening, we can't do it at once. I'm not enthusiastic about it because whenever you bring people together like that, you know that, and I'm speaking from the public health perspective anyway, you know that there's the high likelihood of having a spike or an infection or, you know, it's a mini epidemic in that particular, in that particular location. So although I'm not enthusiastic, the most important thing is that we are doing this in a safe way and we are engaging all stakeholders involved to make sure that we have the best outcome of this while keeping our last, to make sure we are ready if there's any outbreak that comes out of this particular, um, um, reop this particular reopening of universities and school environments. Uh, if, uh, the visual you are seeing on the screen now, I, I don't know if you can see it, the, the uh, Lagos State uh, Polytechnic uh, used the disinfection tunnel uh, today to uh, speed up the process of uh, students complying with COVID-19 so that they can access uh, their, their classrooms and other facilities within the institution. Uh, what do you make of that? Although I cannot view the screen, I, it sounds like a very laudable, laudable initiative because there are so many guidelines that definitely they have to follow. One of them is the contamination. One of them is making sure there's a disinfectant. 
there's um, washing facilities for washing hands, for using um, hand sanitizers. They still have to make sure that despite the fact that they are contaminated, they are still maintaining social distancing. You know, this, if, if from what you were saying, I can see that infrastructure is being put in place, and that's where our concern lies as public health physicians. We know that this is necessary, but our infrastructure being put in place, I mean, so our classrooms, we still have to do a lot of virtual learning because our classrooms are not, most classrooms I know, I, I finished from uni lab back then, I do not know about how well these facilities have been extended now. I mean, most of our, even our university classes are not built to capacity to encourage social distancing. What you have are people sitting on the floor on, on um, desk tables just to make sure they are around for lectures. So even as we are, we are, we are definitely um, looking at going back to universities and when we start in our tertiary role. The contamination, making sure that we are starting our classes, still making use of virtual and e-learning. These are very, very important. So if Java Tech has done that, I am I am I am impressed. This these are one of the initiatives that we need to look at. So each university and that's why we don't well, we even though the government has stated we open universities. A lot of initiatives still have to be taken. You have to involve the teachers, even the students, involve the administrators, involve the, the uh, uh, keepers, like the cleaners, bring everybody to a round table and then make sure that this initiative is tailored to that particular institution. So we are not in advantage of creating a um, disaster, disaster in waiting. Uh, you have about uh, 90 seconds uh, uh, to answer this final question. And this has to do with the worry by the presidential task force about the fact that, for example, the low number we have today, which is 79, came from only 13 states. According to the health minister, that presupposes that more than 20 states did not send in any figures. And probably that is as a result of the fact that they are not doing any testing anymore. Yes, I'm... I'm Ninety seconds. So I'm going to say that this is that is quite, um, for lack of a better term, it's not responsible enough. Even though we are seeing a decline in cases and we are seeing that more people are surviving and you know we are reopening in phases, we should still take our data seriously. The only reason we are able to go far and know exactly how how to project, how to plan our interventions is by data. All states and all centers should still be at our lap. If we deviate in terms of making sure our medical data and statistics and our testing is being done concerning COVID-19, we may be taking ourselves back to ground zero. COVID is supposed to help us get better, even with our epidemic, our epidemic and surveillance, not to take us back. So we shouldn't we shouldn't lean on our back. Um, this concept is valid and should be should be should be acted upon with immediate effects urgently. Hey, Dr. Joke Adewale, thank you uh, for uh, your perspective on these issues uh, tonight. Uh, thank you for your time. South Africa began the week with the first of a three-day strike action over a number of issues and demands from government. So the movement of bodies from homes, mortuaries and hospitals is mostly on hold. The President Cyril Ramaphosa on his part began the week with his newsletter praising the members of the media for their role supporting government efforts to combat COVID-19. He is due to hold a series of meetings uh, tomorrow to discuss, amongst other things, the handling of government's response to COVID-19 uh, so far as well as a recovery plan. But the nation uh, continues to wait his next speech uh, on whether the nation is moving on to level one lockdown soon or not. As South Africa waits patiently for President Cyril Ramaphosa to make the official announcement on where the nation will be moving next lockdown-wise, the Transport Minister, Figilin Balula, has been inspecting some of the major airports in the country over complaints of alleged non-compliance to anti-COVID regulations by some airlines currently doing local routes. Some of the airlines are not observing the regulations on board and um, they have totally lapsed in relation to the regulations. There is no enforcement of uh, uh, masks and there is no sanitizing and all of that. Uh, so we want uh, to deal with that. Minister Mbalula also hinted that international flights may soon be permitted under strict conditions, which may include the retention of travel bans on countries tagged high risk. So very soon international travel will be open and uh, we will announce measures as and when that happens.
Meanwhile, the COVID-related death toll seems to be on the decline with sub-100 figures for a few days and only 20 new deaths reported on Sunday for the first time in a long time. This as funeral service providers begin a three-day strike over a list of demands from government. The reason of the strike is that we, we as a funeral uh, industry, we go to a conclusion that our engagements with government are not fruitful. And it has been years and years trying to have engagements with government. But government doesn't uh, engage us in a truthful manner and uh, to show the, the willing power for us to, for them to be able to assist the industry. The recovery rate is currently 88.9%. And so far, over 3.9 million tests have been done in the country. From Johannesburg, South Africa, Betty Dibia for the COVID-19 update. Let's talk to Betty now. She joins us uh, from the commercial capital of South Africa, Johannesburg. Uh, good evening, Betty. Uh, trust you're keeping safe. I'm trying. I hope you are too. Indeed. Let's start off with what some would have thought they probably didn't hear properly. A strike action by undertakers. Yes, that's true. Uh, you have um, it, it's a huge business in the country, well-respected business. So they have a string of demands that it will take a combination of Department of Home Affairs, Department of Health, and Department of Environmental Affairs to solve. But they've resorted to this strike uh, for three days, Monday to Wednesday, uh, to press home their demands. Of course, part of it requirements that have been put in place for them to be able to go on with their businesses. Of course, it's not all of them. They're quite divided because there's another group saying that they're not going to go ahead because they regard themselves as an essential service. Some of the requirements they've been complaining about is, is the issue of outsourcing um, mortuaries. They should make it, they, they want the government to make that uh, recognized and legal because it's not everybody who owns a funeral parlor who would have a mortuary. They're also talking about the issue of something called uh, certificate of competence, saying that it's part of the demands or requirements by the Department of Health for them to be able to process bodies or take part in that activity. And the department is saying it's not a requirement, but they're now claiming, look, you, you sent us the message that is not a requirement via WhatsApp. We want it in writing. So, so the, the, most government mortuaries were not blockaded, but they were present there to ensure that no bodies were moved um, as, as of today. And they said they're going to continue tomorrow and the next, Monday to Wednesday. Does this not have the risk of playing into uh, the COVID-19 containment plan, which in many instances appears to be succeeding now with the figures that are coming out? Uh, and that brings me to the whole issue of whether or not you're moving to level one lockdown and what uh, Minister Fikile Mbalula said earlier today about the whole idea of international flights. On the issue of the COVID uh, containment issue, it's part of the worry of government. But uh, processing bodies here, it's not uh, uh, anybody's uh, uh, job. It's, it's quite uh, regulated in the country, especially the, well, deaths are usually recorded and they're expected to be so. So our government is looking closely at that and um, they say they will keep talking, but the people say they're tired of talking. They had to march to the union buildings last year with some of these, their demands. This time around, they've included the issue of um, a COVID relief fund as well. So um, I'm sure the government won't let it get out of hand. So we're watching to see if by Wednesday, um, this will like uh, just go down uh, the way it started um, and then life will go on or death processing will, will go on, so to say. Then the issue of um, level one lockdown, the president has hinted, the minister of health has hinted, even the um, ministerial advisory committee chairman, uh, Professor Salim Abdul Karim, has also said, look, uh, the country is in that position where you can move to level one lockdown. Even a curfew is not needed. You know, there's still a curfew in place from 10 p.m. to 4 a.m. So we're waiting. I know that the president is um, holding a series of consultations. I know tomorrow he's going to have a meeting with a NEDLAC, a body called NEDLAC, which is the National, uh, and National Economic Development and Labor 
council, something like that, where they, they, they have their partners from the private sector, government sector, talking about an economic recovery plan, is also having a meeting with what they call the president, president's coordinating council, which comprises the president, the deputy president, the premiers, and the South African Lo Local Government uh, Association, where they will be deliberating uh, on the report of the National COVID Command Council talking about the, the government's response to the pandemic in the country. So we're hoping that the president will speak to us soon. Uh, his uh, new, weekly newsletter today didn't mention anything about that. But I know that um, after those meetings tomorrow, people will be watching, probably on Wednesday. Um, I don't know which day is the 15th, that's tomorrow. Maybe after tomorrow, he'll be able to say something. But already we know that the uh, disaster management uh, or national set of disaster has been extended to um, the 15th of October. So he still has room to tell us where we're going. But um, all the indications show that the country will be moving to level, level one soon. Thank you very much, uh, Betty, for that. I'm sure uh, many South Africans will be looking forward uh, to that. Uh, and do continue to stay safe out there. Thank you very much, you too. While COVID-19 is continuing to spread across the world with nearly 30 million confirmed cases and a death toll that's close to 1 million. Here's our global update. The U.S. continues to be the country with the highest number of coronavirus cases in the world, but new cases are set to be falling and are down by 44% from the peak on July 16, when more than 77,000 new cases were reported. However, Midwestern states are seeing a spike. North Dakota, South Dakota, Missouri and Iowa last week reported more recent cases per capita than all other states. Until now, the Midwest has avoided a surge in coronavirus cases. Meanwhile, in Britain, new restrictions banning social gatherings of more than six people went into force today amid a rise in coronavirus infections. The government said the new measures will ban large groups from meeting anywhere socially, but will not apply to schools, workplaces, funerals, organised team sports or weddings. The rule of six, which differs slightly in Scotland and Wales, will be enforced through a £100 fine if people fail to comply, doubling on each offence up to a maximum of £3,200. Head of Paris Hospitals has warned that the number of COVID-19 cases doubling every two weeks in the French population could end up with more care units being saturated. France, like every other European country, has faced a resurgence of novel coronavirus, leading the government on Friday to promise steps to speed up tests and toughen measures in high infection zones to avert a return to the general lockdown imposed earlier this year. Former Italian Prime Minister Silvio Berlusconi left hospital today after overcoming the coronavirus, saying he survived the most dangerous challenge of his life. A smiling Berlusconi told reporters, I said to myself with satisfaction, once again, you've got away with it again. The 83-year-old media tycoon had come down with pneumonia and was considered a high-risk patient because of his age and underlying health conditions, including heart problems. Finally, Kenya is set to begin trials of a COVID-19 vaccine developed by a British company in partnership with Oxford University. The trials will target hundreds of health workers who are on the front line in the battle against COVID-19. These are the people that will be among the first participants in Kenya to take part in clinical trials for a COVID-19 vaccine being developed by AstraZeneca in partnership with Oxford University. That's our COVID-19 update uh, for tonight. You can get details of our stories and indeed stories on other topics apart from COVID-19 by visiting our website, channelstv.com. There you'll get uh, more updates and a better understanding of all you need to do to stay safe during this period. And of course, uh, inform yourself about what is happening worldwide. I'm Ladia Kiridoluali. Thanks very much for watching. Good night.